Eastern Airlines jet preparing to land on a stopover at Charlotte, North Carolina, crashed this morning, killing 69 persons. 13 survived. Bruce Hall reports. The Chicago-bound Eastern Airlines DC-9 jet with 82 people aboard crashed and burned two and a half miles from the end of the runway at Charlotte's airport. The flight had originated in Charleston, South Carolina, and an Eastern spokesman said the plane was being guided into Charlotte by radar due to patches of ground fog. One witness said the plane just came in too low, hit a cornfield, skidded for several hundred yards, struck a tree, burst into flames, and exploded. Federal aviation spokesman said radar controllers were in contact with the pilot moments before the crash. He gave no indication of trouble. 69 people were killed. 13 survived, including the co-pilot and a stewardess. 69 people died at the site of the crash of Eastern Airlines Flight 212 on September 11, 1974. In the hours after the DC-9 slammed into the ground, dozens of families were getting news that would haunt them forever. There were initially 13 survivors. When I got to the hospital, they said, you're going to die. Most likely, you're going to die. We went to this, what's called the rule of nines, to figure out what portions of my skin was burned. And, and then they, for any section, the amount of deep dermal burn. I said, what are my chances? He said, <laughs> he said uh, 97 chance fatality. And I said, I'll take the 3%. They let me go from school a little early. I was like, well, that was weird. And then we pulled into the house and we kind of pulled on the side. I remember just them kind of laying on the bed with me and crying and telling me what happened. And I was like, why? I'd never really seen my parents cry like that. Another one of the initial survivors, Dr. Bill Shelley, also was clinging to life, having lost his leg in the crash and sustaining severe burns in the subsequent fire. The Charlotte resident was rushed to Memorial Hospital, where he actually worked as chief pathologist, and his injuries were so severe that colleagues didn't even recognize him. I mean, somehow they kept him alive. Ultimately, the reason he died was he had inhaled too much smoke. And I can tell you that night when I saw him with my brother and sister, my mom said, still a man, tell me how good he looks. In the coming days, two of the initial survivors would succumb to their injuries and be added to the list of victims. 29 days after the crash, Bill Shelley died too. Oh, probably May and June, I got kind of normal. I could learn to walk in public and people wouldn't notice me. On the same hand, you realize that through the pain, you're going to get better, I hope, and you can get out, I hope. And, but that's all up for grabs when you're in the burn unit like that. This uh, hand, most of the bones in my fingers are, are gone. So what you have to do is you have to say, how can I adapt with what I have to do what I want to do or need to do? By then, the truth had started to reveal itself. When the National Transportation Safety Board issued its final report, the findings were clear. In the minutes before the plane went down, the pilots were engaged in a casual conversation and demonstrating what investigators deemed to be, quote unquote, poor cockpit discipline. They're having conversations ranging from politics to used cars. Um, so when you add all of that together, you can see where mistakes and errors uh, could creep in. And unfortunately, even with the, the warning that the plane gave them, they unfortunately didn't pick up on it and tragedy resulted because of that. The question was, who ultimately was going to be held responsible for the crash of Flight 212? 